We have uh, news from the world of world athletics. Uh, they banned transgender women from competing in the female category at international events. Tell us a bit more about this. Well, Lord Coe gave the press conference yesterday. There have been some deliberation over the decision. Um, it's caused huge controversy. There's many protagonists in the female category saying it's just unfair that anyone should just be able to trans to, to become, effectively become a, become a, a woman you know, when they've got the testosterone levels of, of a man. It's just unsafe apart from anything else. And I want to bring in uh, former British Olympic swimmer Sharon Davis, if I can, to offer perspective on this. Uh, Sharon, thanks very much indeed for joining us here on GB News. What was your reaction when you heard the news yesterday, first off? I'm just really relieved, really pleased for female athletes around the world. You know, this has been a fight that's been going on now since 2015, so that's, that's eight years. Um, world Aquatics changed their rule last year. Uh, world Rugby were the first to do that on safety grounds. And, you know, the science doesn't back up the decisions that were made. There's 17 peer-reviewed studies out there that show that you cannot remove male puberty advantage. So you're asking female athletes to compete the race knowing that they're starting with a disadvantage. And that would never happen in men's sport. And, and so it was incredibly unfair and, and really difficult, you know, for, for female athletes to deal with when they were not even being given the opportunity to give their opinions. Do you feel a sense of relief? Were you worried at any point that the decision would go the other way? Yeah, I think we all were. You know, there's a tremendous amount of political movements that are going on rather than sport being governed in, in a way that was all about fairness. And for me, it should be safety first, then fairness and then inclusion. And then if we can't, you know, mix the three, we have to go, right, let's debate about this openly and find ways that we can create extra categories or open categories so that sport is for all. Because all sports people want everyone to do sport. We love our sport. You know, we don't want anyone to be excluded. And it's very disingenuous when the, the word ban is used because nobody is banned from sport. They're just banned from a category they don't qualify for. It is difficult because this is a very delicate area, Sharon, isn't it? How do you... And I know it's interesting that Lord Coe said it was important to put fair, sporting fairness before inclusion, but you can understand why some people are going to feel extremely hurt by this, can't you? I mean, you, 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 you're not adopting an anti-trans position, are you? Absolutely. No, never, never have. You know, my, I've always, as I've mentioned, always loved sport, but sport should be for everybody. However... Fairness should be for females as well as it is for males. So we had fair sport for men and then we had unfair sport for female with the inclusion of people who have male biology and have gone through male puberty. Now, that is not right. And you say, well, there'll be some people that will feel hard done by. But half the world was feeling hard done by. You know? <laughs> and so, therefore, it has to be about the majority have to be offered fair sport. And then we have to try and come together and find better solutions to make sure that everybody is included. But that doesn't mean throwing female athletes under the bus. Sharon, it's Aidan again here. How ominous were Lord Coe's comments towards the end of the press conference where he says, we're not saying no forever? Does that leave the door open in some ways to you that maybe this debate isn't quite over yet and there's a little bit of it to run? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't really have a problem with that. I think as long as we're basing all the decisions on the science, which is what we weren't doing before, I don't think anyone is going to argue with that. You know, we have transgender men, that's biological females, who've been racing in the women's category now for quite a long time. I, I watched, you know, the NC2As last year where we had that. And, and females don't have a problem with that, providing nobody is on testosterone. So what we have to do is just to be able to work with the men's category and say, do we need to make that an open category? Or do we need to say that, you know, you can identify as however you like, but, but sport is going to be based on biological reality? It's just, yeah, I mean, there's still debates to be had, providing we can have them respectfully and everybody gets a voice then that's a great way forward. I, you know, I don't believe that at the moment we can remove male puberty advantage, and I'm not sure that we're ever going to be able to do that when we're talking about cue angles of people's hips and, you know, bone density, which just comes with your biology. Sharon Davis, thank you very much indeed for joining us on GB News Welcome. this morning. It's a story that's captured the imagination of everyone. I think it might yeah. uh, run and run this way. I don't think but, it's well, over. I, well, no, it's probably not over, but it, I, I, I have to say I thought the way... Sharon dealt with that was very respectful. Yes. You know, and there are some physical elements which, you know, and she and Lord Coe now has said need to be considered in terms of sporting fairness. But, but I mean, she was emphasising that it's, it's still about inclusion, sport yes. for all, but just how you recategorise yeah. it, perhaps. Well, I, think those, I do think those comments that we're not saying no forever mean that it's going to be discussed again yeah. down the line, well, close the door on it.
That, that was quite interesting because Lord Coe was asked about this at that press conference, how he'd respond to a transgender athlete if they said that this decision was unfair. And he said, well, currently we don't have any transgender athletes um, in international competition, but they are expecting that that day will come. And this is about... Yeah, I think we've seen it in some of the US, US college system. That's where, that's yeah, where, yeah, it's, that's where yeah. it's coming yeah. coming through. And he says it's all about having a greater understanding of the science and then from there decisions, of course, can be made. Mm -hmm. And like you say, Aidan, it is something that... Um, that does capture the minds, doesn't it? And it gets people talking. We'll get our well, teeth into it on GB News, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, yes, well, I mean, it's nice that it was, you know, it was certainly on this occasion, at least, treated with... Um, in a respectful way, which I think is very important. I think too many people jump on the bandwagon and just wave their flags about. That was, that was a sensible discussion. Mm. There you mm. go.